Long Live Podcast. I'm James Rudin Waters. I'm joined by Nate Boddington. It Hi. is a partially clouded day, and it's the end of the world. <laughs> it's the end of the world. Oh, that's the funniest thing you'll ever say. <laughs> what does the end of the world mean? What does it mean to be faced with all these disasters and imminent threats? What, do, what can we learn from it? What should we be doing to, uh, uh, to, to prepare for the end of the world? Stuff like that. So <clears throat> we were talking about, just a second ago before the call, about um, how, well, it's the Stoics call it, talk about fortune. And they say that we, you know, we, 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 we have all these things put in place in our lives to be secure. But the problem is, is that, you know, most of them we didn't really earn. You know, we didn't earn the luxuries that we were, were afforded from like, you know, from like, you know, takeaway food to, to, to always kind of heating electricity and water, you know, the luxury of so much luxury really. And um, yeah, fortune is so, you can be so quick to just fortune just come and sweep it all away. So what we need to remember is <clears throat> that in amid the coronavirus panic and <laughs> what was funny about the coronavirus panic is that you know, people think that this was this is the proper threat when actually last month we were worried about the Australia bushfires and then the month before that we were worried about World War Three. So maybe we can learn from this and, and say to ourselves, right, okay, it's not that the threat doesn't exist, it's that the threat has always existed. Something would happen. And before we created nuclear weapons and before we destroyed the planet, of course, we had asteroid attacks and maybe aliens and uh, maybe <laughs> later. And, and, you know, and, and uh, you know, stuff like that. And then we had terrorism in the, you know, the beginning of the 21st century. So <clears throat> this is the, the real, um, the real crux is that, you know, we need to, we need to understand that our lives are always hanging, you know, they're always hanging by a thread, but not to get dissuaded or panicked about it because, and, and, and rather as your, as, 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 as the guarantee that your life is always going to stay secure and exactly the way that you planned it out to be is going to grow lower. Your vitality from what you have is going to inevitably go up. Am I right on that? Your vitality will be, you'll, you'll be much more strengthened of like, wow, okay, this is, this is my life. I'm making a podcast. I am having a cup of tea. This may be my last cup of tea. Who knows? You know, and it, it all may be your last. And that happens anyway, even from like from the world basis to like, to the individual basis, you know, you could die today. You know, and, and yeah, so it, it is all, it's all, yeah. it's our fear of death that makes us freak out over these things. And the way these things are reported that make us freak out about these things, because the people who are reporting it feel the wrong way about it. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, I do agree. <clears throat> I mean, the thing, yeah, so, I mean... I mean, it isn't, yeah, it is fear of death, but it isn't, I mean, there's also fear of disorganization. For example, <clears throat> let's say all the supermarkets went out and a lot of people died from the next superbug, which eventually comes, you know, I'd probably have to gather some friends. If I could, probably couldn't be able to reach them through the internet. And I'd have to, you know, I'd have to go pilgrimaging to other supermarkets to find food. That would be a completely different life experience for me. And... <clears throat> Something that I was spending last night thinking about, I put on some like Basinski's disintegration loops, and I just let myself immerse in like the right. This could be this could be what's going to happen to me in twenty years, you know. And it was scary, but it 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 it, it kind of like in retrospect, it kind of fills you with a bit of purpose because it's like right, this is what I have to, you know. This is you know, it's that responsibility of like, you know, I have to look after the people around me. You know, you're, you're running to strangers. You're also looting for supermarkets and saying, do you want to band into a team or whatever? And this sounds, this sound, it does sound like, <clears throat> I mean, that's why I'm wearing the glasses because, you know, it's, it, it, it sounds like I'm a crazy person <laughs> and, I'm not, and, I, <clears throat> and I want it to look like a crazy person. But I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I'm just saying, what if, you know, and like, you know, it's good. It's good to like, it's good to at least meditate on it from time to time. To just be like, wow, I'm, I'm I'm afforded such luxury, such extraneous, abundant luxury that maybe I need to appreciate it as very temporary and very 
specific to a certain point in my life, which it always is going to be, even if the world doesn't end. Yes, you, you know, you, you, you're, 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 your life is still going to just change like that. So that's enough of me talking. Give me, give me your input. I don't, yeah, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't even think it's just like the the things in that you have in your life that are the luxury. I think it's like feeling secure by those things in your life is also a luxury, because yeah. you know, like once all those things are gone. Like, you know, say someone breaks into your home and steals a load of things from you. Like, some of those things might not even matter to you, but the feeling that you have attached to those, you know, those things, those things yeah. that make you feel secure, you know, maybe just yeah, like the, right. lock, the lock on your door being broken. Suddenly, yeah. you know, your, your feeling of safety is taken away. And, you know, yeah. that's a luxury too. It's, it's not just your, like, material earnings and the things that you have in your life. That, um, are a luxury it's also the way you feel about those things yeah man <clears throat> I, I agree and a lot of things that we do that we do uh hold on to for the sake of just whatever it is for secure it is for security and, and a rigid identity this this is who i am <clears throat> i am these 12 ps3 games and these 50 books and I, how did they? How did they? How did they describe it in Fight Club? I really like the way they described it in Fight Club. It was like things um, you, the things you own end up owning you. Sorry. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was one of them. I think. I think it was like what? What? What kind of uh, dining room table like defines me, as, me a as a person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The answer really? is none of them. But, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, it, exactly. Yes, yeah, and, and that's the that's the thing, man. <clears throat> we we. I mean, it's lovely to have these luxuries, and I, I have, I have, I have luxuries and everything else. But you know, it, but like you know, I, I, I have. You have to bask in them and be like, "Wow, this is this is so good," you know, because because and 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 if you can't do that, then maybe you need things to be shaken up a bit because you know, <clears throat> for the for the for I do think that like the longer you you rely on security and comfort, the less meanings in your life. You know that that that, that you, you you know if everything was done for me, you know, and I didn't have projects, you know, these projects aren't even like that, you know, wanting of me. But <clears throat> the fact that like I have these projects keeps me sane and mm. very grounded because I feel like I have to do something. You know, it's not that I really have to do it; it's that. <clears throat> it looks you, you know, feel it, it, you feel an ever growing desire to do it oh. which makes you feel as if you have to do it yeah i know yeah, what you um, mean and and it, you know it, it, it's that like it's that part of the brain that's associated with exploration you know we you know <clears throat> and um you know discover and curiosity and discovering new things which is what the podcasts are all about you know both disc both being educated on new things and you know, to, sort of talking about my experiences. Cyrus watched my podcast and he told me yesterday that he didn't know how bad my psychosis was. So that's interesting. I, 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 I always thought that everyone knew that I was a little bit fucking bonkers. <clears throat> but it was just funny because, like, you know, I explained it very specifically in, in, in the first podcast we did. And uh, I'll put it in the description. And... Um, it was it was just interesting, you know. I'm I'm waffling on a bit, but it was it was it was it was like you know I, I'm glad that I, you know I, I've sort of taught myself to articulate what exactly goes on in that kind of brain. So I've really lost what we were speaking about. But yeah, me too. Well, what, yeah. what 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 were we talking about before this? We were talking about like um, you know how your com that was it. You were talking about how your comforts, uh, you know, the the more comfortable you are in your life, and the more everything's done for you, the less urgencies and uh, less urgency you have to to make to like manifest something, you know, and be like, right, I'm going to meet this person, and we're going to get rid of all the underlying social and cultural and you know communal pretenses of like oh i wouldn't hang out with you you're not a cool person and you have to band together but that could be really that could be really good because we are in so, we are in such such thick cages <clears throat> of this is the way my world is this is the way my world is and a lot of it comes down from the comfort i think and and as soon as as soon as you 
as soon as like, you know, 90% of people get killed from a superbug and you're one of the last ones, you know, because you're healthy. Right. I've got to do something about this now. You know, I've, I've got mm. to, you know, you, you know I, I, but, but, you, but you, re, you remove those cages because you, you have to act and you have to act in a different way to how you were doing before. Yeah, that's what, yeah. But I can't even imagine being in that situation. I mean, I'm, I'm one of, I am a victim of comfort, I think. I'm definitely one of those people that surrounds myself with people. And I can, I can usually tell, like, within seconds whether or not I'm going to get along with a person. And that's awful. Yeah, and I think, that, I think that, that is awful. But I'm usually right. And that, that's the thing. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes I'll be like, well, actually, I was wrong about you. But usually I'm not. Usually, like, I'm, I don't know if that's just because I've got autism and I can tell, you know, what kind of people I find overwhelming or the kind of people that I think are arrogant or I don't know. Yeah. But I think generally I do, I do have a pretty good sense for um, the kinds of people that I want in my life. But that's, I think that's just through having been in the world for a long time, I think. Well, not that long, but you know what I mean. Like I've met a lot of people in my life. So um, yeah. But I, yeah, I think I think that we do. I do I do think that we we do this, and I think everybody does it. I think everybody has things in their life that they they brought into their lives because of comfort that they wanted to fill some kind of void they were having, but that not you know not too much. You know, we yeah. we've got to have we've got to have it. You know, just the right amount so that we don't feel uncomfortable yeah. some people find it uncomfortable like this is like a dumb example but i remember like i used to be like i mean it's like taking sides as one of these things i think that we uh that we do out of comfort like uh there was like years and years ago people don't care about this half as much now but people used to be like really defending one side they'd be like okay i have to have a playstation because i had a playstation 3 and I had a PlayStation Two, and I had a PlayStation One. So yeah. I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a PlayStation Four because I've always had Playstations. And they would deny full full right that the other side, like the Xbox, is good because they never had one. Yeah. Of course, that's bullshit, and I've come to realise that. You know, I I actually have both now, and I love them both <laughs> equally. And now yeah. and now and now that brings me comfort because I like I like <clears> both. And I've sort of cherished, I've cherished that, and now, and I've, I've sort of extended that, uh, that realm of comfort. I think it's, I think it's ironic that, like, um, what was it? Yeah, what's ironic is that I only use my PS3 to play Fallout 4, as we're speaking about, because Fallout 4 is obviously well, Fallout New Vegas. Sorry. Fallout 3, Fallout 3. Yeah, <laughs> I prefer New Vegas, but like, um, New yeah, Vegas. Just, New Vegas is good. New Vegas is good, um, and, and that is about the end of the world, and uh, quite, a, quite a horrible end of the world where people you know a lot of rad roaches around and all that kind of stuff which is um scary honestly i mean that, that that's like a kind of you know but, but like yeah i mean i want to talk about like ethics of the end of the world because because we, there's a lot of political theory that lo and, and political theory and, and philosophy loves to talk about human nature what were we like before the political sphere and before the state and before a society before like an organized society and not to drop too many names to prove that I've read it, because that's not what I'm intending to do. But uh, Hobbes says that we were war, we were fighting each other, war of all against all. And Rousseau said that we were at peace and harmony with nature. And obviously, neither of them have been proved, or I guess can be proved, because you, you can't, you know, and especially because you can't actually go back and know what it's like to be <laughs> in the mind of the of of of, of the pre-social human being. But. Uh, yeah, so so like, it's it's so like the you know, the, and the question is, you know, what would happen if <clears throat> if some catas catastrophe happened and society had to be reorganized by the survivors? You know, would people would people fight for resources or would we organize ourselves into like a into like another harmonious sphere or whatever you'd call it? Right. I and, think it would probably end up. I mean, like, I, I mean, the the only example I sort of have for this is sort of like uh, in sort of teamwork, I guess, is sort of like being in a in a band. Like, you usually have like a few people who you know handle the writing process, and then you have the one guy that tells everyone to shut up and you know keeps everyone organized. And you have clans. So I think that's what I'm getting at. You have like a clan, 
And I think people people would find like we would go back to like old times where like you had a clan and a leader and you had you know people who blindly followed this this leader because they're the strong personality and then you'd have another clan and then that clan would be like oh no we don't agree with you and then i i think what would what what would eventually happen is that we would just build politics again i don't, I don't think that a world without politics is possible personally yeah right <clears throat> but what's interesting is that philosophy and politics and so and sociology has shown us that we're moved we've moved you know for example we think so much differently to how we did 150 years ago about individual freedom human rights uh children shouldn't be workers out you know <clears throat> that you know like in, in the uk you know there should be in the uk which is where we live um you know that there should be a universal health care and, and whatever whether you agree with that or not but like um <clears throat> what's interesting is you know i'm wondering <laughs> I, i'm I'm wondering. It's right. I'm wondering whether those those social imperatives would stay somewhat, or the remnants would stay, because we've grown up our whole lives, or would they just deteriorate over time? Because you know, I know, I, I, you know, and this is this is the this is the important thing. <clears throat> you've got to you've got to think about what it'd be like, and you've got to think about the, the, the problems you get yourself into of, am I going to mindlessly follow a leader in the end of the world? And really consider it in your head and be like, am I one of those people? Because the likelihood is, is if you were put in that situation, you may be, but if you really think about it and you really think about what, what that would inevitably result in, and you really solidify your own ethics and your own moral, mm. your own morality, then you might be yeah, swayed is... from that. This is really interesting because, like, there's a lot of things that we like in our lives that we feel like we have to do. Like, yes. you know, we have to have a job, and we have to, you know, we have to have we have to pay our rent and support ourselves and be able to get by. But at the in the end of the world, you never know what kind of situation you're going to be faced with. You know, like every doctor in the world might be dead, and then suddenly you might be faced with the dilemma. It's like, oh well, shit. Should I learn medicine? Yeah. So that I. You know, so that I can so I can take care of these these people that are dying, or you know, you might you might you know you might have to build science back up from from the beginning. Find find ways to like make fires that aren't rubbing rocks together, so that you know you can keep people warm, or you can keep the lights on when it's dark, so that you know when some horrible rad roach slash horrible creature uh -huh. comes along, you can you know. You can see them coming, and you can defend yourselves with weapons. And um, we're, we're not we're not saying that we're, we're going to be rad roaches. <laughs> no, I know, I know. I'm just I'm just saying that these like these sort of problems are things that you would never think about in everyday life, and things that you might have to think about if you know the the, the world had ended. And... Yes, and this is important. We don't know what we get to keep and what we get to lose, but we do know what we get to keep in our individual personalities if we assess them properly. If we don't, if we don't go with the curb because it's the right thing to do and be governed by some Leviathanic, like, <clears throat> oh yeah, this is the, this is, this is, the, you know, you know, I mean, I, I you know, I had, I had, I, you know, I spoke to someone a few days ago who, you know, said that they hated their job, but they had to do it because they wanted to work up the corporate ladder because eventually in 25 years they could do something that they wanted to do. And I was like, you have really painted yourself into a corner is not even the term. It is way more than that. It's it, it, it's it's you have you have failed to grab life by the balls and do what you want to do and not care what people think or what a society will think of you. I mean, and and you've completely gone the other way and you've completely gone into life. See what I find really interesting about this situation is like, I feel like a lot of the time when people don't follow their dreams or they they don't you know follow a goal that they've had for a long time, it's usually because of someone else in their life or like some form of influence. Like a teacher telling you that you know you'll never you'll never be able to do it, or your your parents sort of trying to sway you into a more you know reliable source of income, or yeah. like a girl a girlfriend saying you're not making enough money. I'm making more money than you. Can you please get a job that pays so that we can sort of pay the rent? But the thing that's interesting is that he doesn't have it. Like he doesn't seem to have any of those sort of yes, fresh, that's the thing. That's, it, he's it, sort it, it, he's sort of. Yeah. It's come off his own back. He's sort of like, oh well, I have to do this because society tells me that I'm supposed to do this, and I have to do. It. That's, and, that's at, not even, yeah. and at that point, you're kind of a slave to 
you're literally a slave to to the, to the government at this point. You're not doing. You're not living for you anymore. You're not living because you know. You're not doing the things that you enjoy because you want to do them. You're doing them because that's what you're supposed to do. It's not. It's, it's not. I mean, it, I I almost I agree. I agree with everything except the fact that the the government's even encouraging you to do that because <clears throat> as long as you're. I mean, in the I think, government. <laughs> I think it's due. It's due to the way we're rewarded. Because, like, if you think about, right. like, if you change, if you if you think about it like this, like, money as a reward for something that you've done, Ra rather than thinking about it, I have done this, so I deserve it. Just think, thinking about it, like, this is my reward. The government rewards you for doing certain jobs with more money than you might get for something like you know someone who does graphics design for example yeah. who is a dramatically underpaid job I, I think it's disgusting there's more work goes into that than you know people think and you know gen generally just just any kind of sort of uh, creative job you generally get paid a lot less and you know people like accountants and you know people people who just people who work in in banks and you know, scientists and people who work in, you know what I mean, just, you know, these yeah. big, these big corporations and industries, you get paid more. And, and I think that, that, uh, the theory of reward, just feeling, you know, you're getting paid more for doing some, doing something that the government deems to be more valuable. So you, that, so you are going to feel that way. You are going to feel like, okay, well, I'm being rewarded for doing this. Therefore I am doing the right thing. But that's not necessarily true because there are different ways of reaping rewards. You can reap re rewards <clears throat> from from you know feeling valued where you work. It doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be the money. It's like oh I, I am a valuable asset where I work. You know I, I I'm I or I'm responsible for I, 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 these various, these people or I feel good about what I do as a is a reward yeah, or a value. Exactly, you know like exactly, exactly. and um yeah and, and I think that. I can't. Oh shit! I can't say his name, can I? Um, oh, a, if 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 he is watching though, if you're watching, dude, um, take that into consideration because you know your life is more valuable than the money you make. Is... I mean, and and, and <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, like I, I do feel a little bad that it's come up and like he gets offended. I I, I just <clears throat> it just really shook me, man. And, and, and I love I love you, man. By the way, I love you. <clears throat> we we do love you very much. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, I mean, it, it, it's 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 just like, <clears throat> you know, it, it, the the idea that money can like the idea that money working working living for the weekend and 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 living for the evenings, uh, is is good because it buys you money is just is just the worst thing. I mean, I talked to some, I talked to you know, I talked to uh, the guy that runs Jam Jar quite a lot, and he's like a bit of an entrepreneur himself. You know, he, he has all these, he has all these projects that he's working on. Yeah, I think he, you know, he makes good money, blah blah blah. <clears throat> and he did, and 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 he, and he, you know, he may have like saved up to eventually do something that he wanted to do, but there's there's so many ways around it, and it's your life purpose to do what you enjoy, and it's your life purpose to not be miserable. You have a moral obligation to be to do something that you enjoy, because if you don't, you'll go insane, and you're going to bring other people down, and you're going to, you know, you're going to you're going to resent your own life and you matter as a person. So, you know, you matter, you have a moral obligation to be good to yourself as, as, as you do to be good to other people, I think. <clears throat> and, and yeah, just money, money buying you happiness. It's like, it's like when, is this, when is this pleasure going to come? You're gonna book a holiday, you're gonna do that, and you're gonna be thinking about work and you're gonna be thinking about what you need to, you know, uh, and, and you're thinking about all the expenses. Oh, I shouldn't buy this other drink, but I'll do it anyway. <clears throat> and, and you know, and it's easy to spend a lot of money on a holiday, and 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 if you do have a lot of money, you're going to blow it all on the holiday, and and, and then you're going to have to go back to work, and then you'll miss, hate your life even more because you've now it's relatively even worse. And it's just like, <clears throat> why not do what you love all the time and want to work more? And you know, I was saying like, you know, what do you like doing? He's like, I like walking on the beach, and I was like, okay, I can think of five jobs that involve the beach, for example, you know, like tour guide, ice cream shop, all of that sort of stuff, you know, and it's like. Do something, you know, you have to do it. You have to do it. And I'm right about that. And I think he thought I was a bit loopy when I was so persistent, but I'm not. It's, it, you, 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 you know, because 
even if you do that, you're, you know, even in the government side, you're still you're still creating jobs. You know, what if you start an ice cream franchise and 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 you create jobs that way? You know, not the jobs or everything, but like, you know, you're you're still you're still according to the system doing what it wants. So, mm. but you're but you're happier. So just so so you you can forget all the anarchic 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 um kind of like you know i want to live outside the system and then you can also forget the whole i'm going to live completely in what i deem the system to be even though that's not true because the system is so complicated does that make sense so like <clears throat> yeah it does and, all right and and just do you have to do what you have to do what you enjoy and to bring it back to the end of the world i mean like you know i want to talk a little bit about if and i'm i'm, I'm sorry for waffling on a bit but I, I want to talk a bit about like you know passions and people you know and I, I I had I was thinking I was thinking today like um you know oh wow when 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 it's the end of the world you know I, I won't be able to do my passions you know you know well, if it's the end of the world I won't be able to um I won't be able to do what I enjoy and I'm like fucking bollocks to that of That's course I'll true. be able to, of you course I'll be able to. <clears throat> you will be able to you still be able, like even if you don't say say you don't have a piano anymore mm -hmm. and say you don't have a guitar anymore or whatever yeah you still have your voice exactly. You can still sing. No one can take that away from you. Exactly. You know, like, unless they slit your throat or whatever. But even then, you can still no, sing. It will just hurt, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You might not be dead. There are people who will survive as well. I mean, I mean, we're, we're, we're not going to, you know, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think that we're going to run out of things to write on with, a, with a, an ink I for think a while. When we took like, hang on, I've got yeah. So like, when it when it comes to passion, like I think a lot a lot of people think that if you're not making money, then you're not you know then what you're doing isn't worthwhile. But I I and I'm I'm kind of getting sick of sort of quoting people, but uh, I I do want to quote this because I thought this was like a really valuable uh, thing. It's something that Ethan said on the uh, the H G podcast. He said he said that like. The most valuable thing that you can do with your money is to is to employ people to do things that stop you from being able to do what you want to do. So, like, if you if you can hire someone to to clean your apartment while you're not there, so that you have more time to edit your videos and make podcasts or make music or play the piano, then that is probably because the most valuable thing that you have in your life. Is time because if you don't have the, th the time to do the things that you want to do then you're going to be miserable because you you know you, you can you can make these podcasts and stuff but if you don't have the time to edit them or you don't have the you know you don't have the time on the all the resources to do so then you know you're going to be unhappy and you're not going to be able to put as much content out as you want yeah. so like you know I, I don't even think it's like what you, how like you know the amount of money that you make that is valuable i think it's what you spend the money on that is valuable it's like what am i how, how am i spending my money and how is that helping me you know it's is really buying you know the the next you know big smartphone really making a big contribution to my life i have a smartphone it's a good smartphone i don't need another smartphone i'm not going to buy another smartphone instead i'm going to employ someone to clean my kitchen once a week you know you make a, you and, make a job as well so, you know. and now i have and now i have the time that i need to do other things if you spend that time well I was like, you know if you're not just like sitting around while someone else cleans your flat you know yeah I mean, exactly i mean I <clears throat> and, and you can still make that a, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say productive because that has connotations, but you can still make it a valuable activity, you know. If you enjoy, if you enjoy bird watching, you know, just get a book and then like, you know, write down a list of birds that you've seen in a week, like, you know, if you want, if you want, but like, you know, but the, what's important is whether you're happy or not. And, and, and yeah, but to go, to go back to the end of the world, you know, whatever well, well, the topic of pod, the topic is like, um, <clears throat> You know, like for example, if if you just love watching birds, you'll still be able to do that at the end of the world, and you have to. You might you might be able to. Well, let's see if the birds. Let's see if the birds are slow around, obviously. But like, let's say birds are slow around, and you like bird watching. You know, I I I think it's very important to continue to watch to watch birds. Or in my case, you know, if I didn't have a piano or a guitar anymore, I would write. I would write, and I would write stories and 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 and, and things from my own experience, and like you know. 
philosophies and I'd still do that and I'd probably I'd, I maybe I'd go from community to community saying that I want to read you this you know maybe that would become the way I you know create create a purpose for myself but you can't just you can't be but like but obviously if I need to do that now when I'm in such comfort I need to do it then even more maybe yeah because, yeah because, it because, might it might be that you 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 might just have to figure out what the essence of what you do is rather than you know, think about it hyper literally. Like I like to create music, but if if you strip the music away and just say I like to create, yes, you can you can still create things. You know, in fact, you you might you might be more motivated to create things in a world that doesn't have as many things in it anymore. You know. Um, yeah. So yeah. I want to. <clears throat> it's interesting because we we are we are a hoarding species. And I found it interesting, like, you know, so nature comes, nature goes, you know, you can't hold on to every species, you can't hold on to every fruit, you can't hold, you know, because it all goes away. But we create things and inventions and products that will never go away. This is, that, this is what I find, like, like, they're all ideas, you know, like, we, we you know, we, we, wouldn't it be weird if, like, over time, certain albums just died and they didn't exist anymore? Yeah. It'd be the strangest thing, but, like, that's actually more in flux with how nature works. And I think it's interesting, like, and, 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 you know, we're, we're, we're going up exponentially and eventually something has, you know, something has to stop. And, 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 and I, I, do, I do think that having, I do, I do think it's great to have such access to like millions of albums or whatever, but we, we, we don't appreciate it all nearly as much. You know, I, I remember, you know, when, when you're a kid, you, 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 you really, you know, you, you just appreciate the music because, because, you know, because, because it's like, it's all new to you. And to to be deprived of that would be you know you got to think to think about it and how to deal with how to deal with it it's like you know it's a, you got to you know, for every for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction i think so, yeah. i don't even think i don't even think it's just like what you grow up on i think that a lot of it is due and i, and I know i'm what i'm another one jumping on the it's the digital age bandwagon but it's true I it, think it, that, it, it, it is yeah and like there was this i mean it's it's not a it's not music related but there was this case where there was this game called ducktales i've never played of it i've never heard of it before hearing about this but basically um the developers or whoever created this game decided that they were gonna take it off all of the, uh, the, the all your means to download it. So you know it was it was gone. You couldn't play this game. It was impossible. And it and it and it got a lot of people thinking about the longevity of of you know digital uh, softwares and products. It's like well how how long will this be available? Like do I really own this thing? If it can be removed and then I can no longer use it, that thing that I paid for is now gone forever. Yeah, man. And I, and I think like living in a world where you know, like especially in the digital area, uh, di digital era where anything can just be taken away from you at any time, does sort of it does sort of make you less. Uh, it make it, ma it makes you less positive about those things. It makes you sort of. It doesn't. It doesn't make you want them more. It makes you want them less for some reason because they can be taken away. <clears throat> I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you know the uh, yeah exactly and 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 you know it is a great shame but you know but but these things you know but so we have so much still you know and mm. what's good you know and, and Slavoj Žižek said like you know he said that there are positives to the corona outbreak and one is that we can like <clears throat> harmoniously <throat> think Slavoj Žižek yeah he's like he's a Slovenian philosopher. And he said that, you know, we can, you know, so I didn't read, I didn't read, I, I, I sort of read little tidbits, but he said that, like, we can start thinking of a long, a, like a long term sort of solution now that we've been threatened with something that isn't quite, you know, it's not catastrophic. I mean, obviously, it's horrible and like thousands of people, you know, tens of thousands have died, but it's not absolutely, you know, it, like, this is, a, it's, it, it's a good warning. And, and, and this is, I guess this is why we're doing this, because it's like, you know, <clears throat> the things that I've listed, you know things that we've sort of spoken about that can be put in lists like you know appreciate what you have realize that you know vitality has never been lower uh, you know and i believe that is a lot because we have so much you know the vitality to really appreciate what we have just can't be having because we have everything we have absolutely everything another part you know we spoke about was you know how to face the, how to face like a potential cat catastrophe is to really think about 
<clears throat> you know what you what you enjoy doing and another thing is to think about your you know your own individual morals and, and, and not to just go with the crowd because crowd thinking is 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 the is the worst you know you've got to think you've got to think what do or do i really value what do i really care about what would i do what, what would i do anyway you know nothing's really changed you know not, not much has changed in the, the world i do next, think next you know? we kind of got we kind of went through this a little bit in the last episode but i do think that um I do think you forget sometimes that not everybody is as much of as an individual as you. Like um, a lot, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of people are like perfectly happy just following crowds and trends and stuff. And like you know, a lot yeah. of people, but not everybody is has like a massive you know personality and a massive drive to be an individual, and and that's okay. You know, I, I don't, I don't. Now. I don't. I don't want. I don't want anyone to feel like you know attacked because they're not. Um... I'm not attacking anyone. I'm not attacking. I'm. I'm saying. I'm saying it's absolutely fine now because we. We are. We. We are very comfortable and secure. But when the shit hits the fan, then you. Then we've got them. We. We you know. You've got to at least consider what would it be like if there was no crowd to follow or a new crowd emerged that I would either choose to follow or not. That's that that's 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 important, I think. And yeah, and, and you think <clears throat> it's like you know it's for, you know, um, you you know, and and and, and it might it might be uh, it might be a bit painful to to reflect on that sort of thing, but you should do it anyway. You should do it anyway. And and I I, I don't think I'm that much of an individual. I mean, I'm I'm not like incredibly that much of an individual compared to a lot of people, but I am not. I am because I feel like I need to be. You know, I, I, if I am if I am an individual, I feel like I'm an individual because because I, I, it's very important to be one. And <clears throat> and uh, you know, obviously, obviously, think about your community and think selflessly and thinking about you know that you. But you have to think about it on your own terms. You can't rely on uh, some other system to uh, to to. To, 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 to determine that because you know the system is corrupt but the ability of the rational mind and the spirit of the person can't it, it, i don't think it can i don't think it can be reduced as easily as you know the mob mentality of entire communities when faced when put under pressure i mean take the toilet paper problem for example you know oh, like, it, so. <clears throat> but it's true <clears throat> but it's, i mean yeah. like i mean like because everyone was worried that they so that someone else is going to do it first, so they're going to they they took it, you know. So I'm 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 going to out of moral duty not do that, you know. I'm not going I'm not going to hoard because I don't believe because it makes the problem worse for other people. I'm I'm going to take the right amount. I'm going to go home, and if it's not there, I don't know, you know. I'll have to just find it in the supermarket and keep looking until I find something, and then just take one, I suppose, you know. That's what I, that's that's kind of like what I think I'm going to do anyway, because like. <clears throat> you know, you, you know, because because you because because I, I don't know. Like I've, I've just assessed my, I, I I've really carefully assessed like what I deem valuable, not just yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, but do you want to talk about? We're on forty-five. We're on thirty-eight minutes. Do you want to talk about the other end of the coin? So we've we've spoken a lot about the denial of the end of the world and 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 the recession into comfortableness. Do you want to talk about maniacs that pro- <laughs> profess profess the end of the world? Oh, and, the, and, the and, JWs. And, and, and the JWs. And the submission JWs. To, and submission to their god, right? So that, that, I mean, that could be, you know, you wanted to talk about that, so I think it'd be interesting. Uh, I, I have been subjected to this for pretty much my entire life because uh, when I was quite young, my mum decided to withdraw from uh, the, the Jehovah's Witness religion and... Um, I have a very small family as a result. I mean, it's just me, my mum and my sister, and then everybody else is a a Jehovah's Witness. So I feel like I'm fairly... It's crazy. I'm fairly versed on this. But um, recently, um, my my uncles and my grandmother uh, came round to see my mum. And they said to her that there was a chance that they might not be able to associate with her anymore because they had to keep their uh, Armageddon predictions a secret from the rest of the world. This 
blows my mind. I think this is like insane. Um, but yeah, no, they don't want that information to leak. So what that basically means is, is they are, you know, cooped up, they're feeling all safe. They're like, OK, well, you know, Armageddon is going to come and all the non-believers are going to be condemned and they're going to die. And then we're going to live and prosper in the new world. And um, but they want to keep that from all the non-believers. They don't want anybody else to know about it. And I just think that's really screwed up. What, what do you think? What do you think about that, Jimmy? I think that's kind of uh, kind of. I feel like we deserve to know I when the world is going to end. <clears throat> well, we're talking about like cults at the end of the world, you know, like sort of pacts and cults that would develop, and it seems like they've already formed theirs before it even happened. And they've also got their own set of rules, not governed by individualism at all, but governed instead by you know, again, there's the, the, the Leviathan, and look, I mean, if you look that up, it means like the sort of the, the state head, or like, you know, the head of the community, which is like, <clears throat> so, I think it's so dangerous. I mean, it, it, it's almost the same, <clears throat> it's almost the same problem as the other end, which is, you know, just submission to comfortableness, except this one, they're, they're saying the end of the world and using the end of the world as an excuse to become, to be cut, to validate their cultish, systems and beliefs and moral codes which they which 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 are governed by you know no we no in i mean like maybe one individual but it's not democratic uh, it, they it, don't, obvious, they don't think not, about it the, the, the problem with that though is that they're so indoctrinated that they don't even think about it like that they're, they're not thinking about like justifying their beliefs and justifying the way they think and justifying condemning everybody else in the world that isn't involved in their you know religion they don't think about it like that they think i am just i am right and i cannot be wrong because god said so that's it yeah. that's all there, there is to it and, yeah, and the thing yeah. and the thing that bog like boggles people like you and me like that about things like that is that we don't believe in a god so we cannot like when we hear them say something like that we just think they're crazy yeah. and, <clears throat> and, and i think that is an interesting segue it's like it's are people who are part of cult are they crazy or are they just you know are, are they just indoctrinated because when you're a child <clears throat> When you're a child and someone teaches you that you know there is a god and you know if you're if you know if you don't believe in god then the armageddon will come and you know you won't prosper you won't be alive yeah if you man, tell I mean, if you tell that to a child they will they will believe it if you do because they <clears> you know, I, yeah i i think people forget how easy it is to actually fall into those sorts of things i think people people who aren't in, in, in it think that like it's like a I, I like they think it's crazy or they think that they're they're, you know, they're brainwashed completely or whatever. But you don't you, you but admit you know but millions of people in the world follow these cults. I mean like you know Tom Cruise is a Scientologist, John Travolta is a Scientologist, Nancy Cartwright, the woman that voices Bart from The Simpsons, is a is a Scientologist. You have seen that there, there are so there, I mean there's countless and um what and and, and you don't know what they're being provided internally through the system and you can't because you're not in it and you've never been in it you know i can and, i can see i can see similarities between just general philosophy and religion though like some sometimes because my mum is very involved in spirituality and my mum will say like, uh, my mum will say like oh well you know i do these chants and now i feel really good and it's like well actually like in my mind the way i the way i perceive that is like well your chanting is basically just you admitting things to yourself. You're, you're saying things out loud, and rather than denying their existence, you're just accepting them. And you're, you're, just, you know, you're saying that these things are happening and that they're true, and, and you've accepted that they're happening, and now, you're not, and now you're not depressed and sad about them anymore. But the actual... Yeah. Like, I don't think that the chanting is a spiritual thing. I think they're just thinking about it as a spiritual thing. I don't... I, don't, I used to be spiritual, but I, I really just... Aren't, I'm not these days. Not, I, I, I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I think I think spirituality is like a mechanism for people, but you know, I think that like I think, I think it's I'm just not... a different delivery system. It's it's like re like religion can be that for some people, but for me, any for me, religion has just always seemed like a, a rule book. It's like yeah. this is how I should live, and it's the way 
hundreds of thousands, millions of people live. And I, I just, I think it just keeps us in this stagnant place where, you know, the world isn't going to progress for those people. It's going to progress for the people who want to know more about the world rather than conforming to these ideas that have been around for, you know, God knows how many years, thousands and thousands of years. And I think that it's, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't think that if everybody was religious and if everybody believed in God and everyone was like, oh, well, you know, when the world will let, when the world ends, we will like, there doesn't need, this is a thing. There doesn't need to be an end of the world if everyone believes in God. Like what? So they, they spend, they spend hours and hours and hours on the streets trying to convert people into their religion. But what is their goal? Because if they convert everyone, then Armageddon, it doesn't matter. I guess, but like, well, the thing is, is that I mean, if everyone was saved, then everyone was saved. Is it? Is, is I don't think it's a zero sum game where people. Oh, it just are... seems silly to me. It just, it does, like, none of it makes any sense. And the, and the thing is, like, I've had a lifetime of explanations to to come to a conclusion, and I don't have one yet. Yeah. Because none of it makes sense to me. Yeah, but that's the, but the thing is, is that people are very different and. Clearly, millions, I mean, billions of people are religious and millions of people follow cults. So, so, and, and so, you know, that's a very, I mean, t- to be honest, I mean, if you want to talk about the mean of human experience, it's a very ordinary experience to, to have that. So, it, 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 I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't, you know, maybe it's, I don't think it's absolute. I don't think everyone has to be religious or anything. But, um, but obviously, obviously, right now, it's a very normal mode of experience. And, <clears throat> I do yeah, I, I do wonder I mean I think what I was getting at is like what what I wonder is like the I I feel like religion exists because we die. I know that's like a, a crazy statement but like like if we didn't die I don't know if religious religion would exist. Like I don't think that we would worry about things like you know life after I, death. I think or... it still would. Yeah. I think it actually still would because um because religion preceded science, and religion was a way to explain things that didn't, that didn't make sense or was 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 unknown to people, such as like you know why is, you know luck would still exist. I think you know be fortune, like you know for example, like oh I'm a very unlucky person. I, I you know I what you know and 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 if science didn't exist to disprove that, I think people would come up with their own religiosity, re- religious uh, religious ideas on how it would happen because you because because people because humans crave that explanation they crave to have it summed up, summed up in some lingual form you know that can be very fascistic obviously and be like you know the language as i write in the book the language can compress you and 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 and, and make you think a certain way you know such as i'm an unlucky person when really you might just be missing opportunities left right and center but we would still you know <clears throat> How 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 would you <clears throat> without science? How would you explain lightning in the sky? How would you explain rainbows? How would you explain comets in the sky? Why? How would you wh- wh- how would you explain what the sun even was? You see, and the religions will obviously would be modeled differently if we, we if we didn't die, like if we were immortal, they would be modeled very differently, and they wouldn't be based around heaven or hell or whatever like that. But we would still need explanations, and those explanations would come before yeah. science. Does that make sense? The, yeah. yeah, it does. But the the problem is, is a lot of religious people actually like deny um, certain factual evidence, and a lot a lot of people think. And this is yeah, like a bit, not, this is a bit this is a that. this is a bit of a segue. But <clears throat> a lot of um, a lot of religious people think that NASA was literally created in order to disprove flat Earth, which is just complete bollocks. Like. NASA is a space exploration company. They they don't give a shit about whether or not the Earth is flat. They know that the Earth isn't flat. There's evidence to prove that the Earth isn't flat. But for some reason, people think that they literally formed their organization to prove that the world isn't flat. And if that's true, if that, if that's true, then why is it still going? And why do religious people think that hundreds of thousands of people that work for one organization are all lying? They deny all factual evidence, and this this is the thing that I struggle with when it comes to religion. Is that like they deny, like my my grandmother is so caught up in her beliefs that she denies evolution. She doesn't like she do, will just full out deny any evidence of evolution. And if you try and show it to her and you try and tell her how it works or prove it to her, she will 
be like, I don't want to see this. And and yeah. to me, to me, like that could seem as if you know, okay, well, my nan's getting upset. I'll just I'll just stop. But to me, it just seems like her own beliefs are fragile. That they're not really. Uh, that she maybe she's realised at some point in her life that her beliefs aren't quite as uh, cemented and aren't quite as factual as she might think, and that they're not <clears> really. Throat> They're not really yeah. based on anything other than belief. I, 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 don't, I don't think it matters because of, of um, not, not. I think it matters, but I don't. I don't think it matters because um, because of uh, because of what it does for her, and obviously it does something for her because you know because you know she she's got like she, there's a lot of there's a lot. Norm, of normally, I would agree. Normally, I would agree. Like yeah. I think I'm, I'm affected by this quite personally, but like I don't feel this way right. about Christianity. And I, and I don't feel like this about Catholicism, you know? I, and I don't feel this way about Buddhism and quite a lot of other religions. It is literally primarily Jehovah's Witnesses that I, I, I find to be a really harmful religion because they don't even believe, they believe that when you're dead, you're dead. <clears throat> and they don't, they don't believe in being kind to everyone they believe in being kind to other people who also believe in God and are Jehovah's Witnesses. They don't associate with people who aren't Jehovah's Witnesses unless they're trying to convert them. They don't agree with giving blood to people who are dying. They, they, they're just, they, they are all about their, themselves. And like, how can that not be harmful? I, I just, great, yeah. that's, that's why I, I put such a heavy focus on them because I think, you know, I, I just don't, I think their way of life is harmful and I, 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 it just, it just, it's frustrating that they can't see that because they're so consumed by their belief system. Like they don't even realize that it's, you know, harmful. I mean, like I know, I mean, I, I, can I talk about this? I know, uh, I know, I know someone, I know someone who is Jehovah's Witness, who is quite obviously gay. Yeah. Right. And I mean, it is, you know, very obvious. I'm, I'm not just, you know, judging this person. It's like, like in their everyday life, when they're talking to their normal friends, they are an out gay person. But if they're, if, if his family ever found out, it would be literally the end of the world for him. He would be thrown out of his congregation and he would be on his own because everybody else in his family is a Jehovah's Witness. And I just, how is that right? How is that right? Literally every other religion, like, I just don't understand how, how you can completely throw someone to the side and be like, well, you know, you, you don't matter to us anymore because you, you know, you're, you're not living the way God wants you to. What about mm. how you, how, what about you? What about, you know, your, your values? Stop, like, don't look at the, the Bible and religion. Who, what are your values as a person? Yeah, I wanted to bring it back to like... what. What do you think? What, what is like your? How do you actually feel about this? Do you actually want to throw your your son out of the family? Like, is that what you want, exactly, or is yeah. is or, or are you just acting because you know this is because of what your religion tells you to do? And I think this is interesting because, despite the fact, and I, I said I mentioned this earlier, despite the fact that um, my uncles went over to my mum's house to tell her that they might not be able to talk to her anymore because they wanted to, they needed to keep the predictions a secret. My nan still talks to my mum. And um, so, do, so do my uncles. They, they still talk, even though their religion clearly states that they're not allowed to do that. So, you know, I don't know. I think, that's, I think that speaks volumes about human values and i think i think that the fact that you know I, 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 my, yes, my nan my nan has let her own values trump what god wants her to do and right. apparently because it's you know a fairly new belief system <clears throat> and to bring it back to like to bring it back to you know how you know the, the topic of conversation what to do with the end of the world i think in the end there is that kind of light the inmost light as current 93 said um, that um, that we 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 all have the capability to well most the majority of us some people are too far gone but the majority of us <laughs> have the cap have the capability to to be good people 
and yeah. but you have but you have but like and this is the important thing and i'm gonna i'll i'll, I'll, I'll finish up we'll finish up now because we're approaching an hour but like you know you 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 know don't defeat yourself you know because when sh- i mean not only because things could be better for you but when shit hits the fan you need to act you know and and, and not to get caught up in fascistic uh you know dogmatic ideas of 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 what the end of the world means for this idea or for this idea and you've got to construct your you know you've got to construct your beliefs and as your as as, as your as your grandmother still talking your mom says that obviously still you know there's that under the, the, i mean like for me i guess that that sounds like to me that there's an un, there's an underlying you know just compassions there and this is you know compassion is just a, a human thing and you know obviously it's clouded in all this like bitter judgment of, of, of what the jehovah's witness book predicts and expects of you but it's interesting because like i mean like we could we could sort of bring this back to uh what we were talking about before like well you know strip everything you're like in your life away and think about what you know how would you live in a world where you've lost everything imagine you know you're a jehovah's witness and you're part of a religion and everybody you know dies and your your whole congregation is gone and your entire way of life is over what do you do now you have no religion there's no congregation what do you do now you know and it's good to think about that it's really good to think about you that. know and and to not be not and and, and to realize that <laughs> things aren't so comfortable fortune will come and sweep everything you know away you know it's the end of the world <laughs> It's the end of the world. <laughs> this has been Long Live Podcasts. And now it is time to thank our honorable mentions. We have Oliver, who says, yeah, I'll drink to that. We have Carol's, who says nothing yet. We have Maisie, who says 9-11 was an inside job. We have Helga, who says nothing. She runs a lovely fashion shop on the old high street called Feral Child. And um, we have Ryan Fleming, a new sponsor. A sponsor? What the fuck? A new, a new Patreon who says, keep true, be fair, and spread love. So once again, this has Aww. been Long Live Podcast. Deal with, think about, respect, inspect yourself, be true to yourself. I mean, think about Ryan, your true Ryan, values. Ryan, Ryan kind of sums it up in that last one I mentioned, really. You know, keep true, be fair, and spread love. So when the shit hits the fan, you better do those things. So for the third time, this has been Long Live Podcast. I'm James Reed Mortis. This has been Nate Boddington. Have a blessed day and let us know in the comments what you'd like us to do next and what you thought of this episode. Wonderful. Long live you. Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye. Bye.